So it's been a couple months since I picked up the a7S III and I wanted to make a quick video to show you all the different accessories that you may want to get for this camera. And if you haven't seen my unboxing video, I'll link it below. But I just wanted to make it a little bit easier and create a checklist of things you may want to get in the order of importance. This is probably the 15th or 16th camera that I've bought over the past decade or so. So every time I kind of make a checklist for myself and kind of a wish list on here are the things I need to make this camera work and here are the things that will make it nice to have. Okay, so let's go through the list right now. First and foremost, you obviously need a car to record on. This right out of the box comes with no recording media and it takes two different types of cards, okay? The one I recommend you get first is this one right here. It's a uh, SD card, standard SD card, but the read and write speed are really important. So this is 300 megabytes per second uh, write speed here on this card. So I'll link this below so you could get the same one I have. And then I got a card case for it to make it nice and organized. And I bought two of these uh, because you really never want to run out of a card. I know these are a bit expensive, especially for an SD card, but you do need at least two media two cards to really get any camera going. So I bought two of them, one's in the camera right now, and one is in this case, okay? So let me close this up. And then I got one of these. Now this is optional, this is really expensive, twice the price of the other one, but this card lets you shoot at really high frame rates on this camera. So 120, 120 frames at 4K cannot be recorded on the standard SD card, so you need this special card from Sony. I really hate that they had to do this, but this is really, really high uh, read and write speed. You can see it's 800 and 700 instead of 300 on the other one. And this is a 160 gig version of this, okay? Now it does fill up quick if you shoot at 240 frames still. So even though it's 160 gigs, it's not gonna get you hours of recording time, but it is useful. I'll make a separate video on slow-mo recording and this does require its own card reader, sadly, too. The SD card could go in any reader, but this needs its own. This is essential. This is optional. It's essential if you need the high-speed recording, 120 frames, 240 frames. And the card reader is essential if you get this card. So that was the number one thing that's essential. The number two thing is this also doesn't come with a lens typically. So if you buy the body like I did, it didn't come with a lens. So let me show you a couple of different lenses and then you could decide what's right for you. I have this pancake lens. This is a 60 millimeter 28 lens. I really bought this for gimbal work. Okay, so typically this is not the first lens I would buy, but it's a 60 millimeter prime. So it's great for gimbal work and it's really light. This whole thing is now really, really light. But the very first lens I always recommend people that buy a Sony camera is this one right here. This is a 24 to 105 f4 lens with image stabilization built into it. So you can put it between manual or autofocus. The autofocus on this camera is incredible. So you don't have to really about, uh, worry about that. But the image stabilization does help if you're shooting handheld with this lens. Okay, so. This is the very first lens I would buy. This is E-mount, so you can see it will just go right on this camera. And I bought, um, this one you got a couple of options. I bought the G Master, just because if I'm spending this much on a camera, I want at least one lens that's gonna keep up with speed on focus and be native to the camera. So I want an E-mount made by Sony. This is a Sony lens, G Master, incredible lens. Then you got this. Okay, this is the same G Master, but this is very wide. This is 16 to 35 and it's faster. It's 2.8 instead of 4. So more light's going to go through this, better for low light conditions. All around very nice lens, but if I had to choose one between these two, this would be one and then this would be my second purchase. This is also almost twice as much as the first one. But again, it's a stop faster and 16 to 35 on a full frame lens. It's amazing. You could get some crazy nice wide shots. Then my third lens would depend on my work, but it may be the pancake lens is what I would buy as a third lens. And this is a Sony pancake 16 millimeter, or I got one more here that I actually haven't used yet, but in my world, I use macro lenses a lot. So this is another G Master. This is the 90 millimeter macro. Now, 
If you never worked with macro lenses, it may not be the type of lens that you may need, but you could get really close to subjects and get really great shots. And that's only possible with a macro lens that could close focus on something with just a couple inches away from it, okay? So that's the order of lenses I will buy. 24 to 105, then 13 or 16 to 35, then either a macro or pancake. If I'm doing more Ronin work, more gimbal work, pancake. If I'm doing more tabletop cinematography, macro. Okay, so cards, lenses, without those two, you can't do anything. So you need at least one card and at least one lens. And then you will get into this world of needing more batteries. This is what comes with your camera. You get one battery and you get one battery charger. Now the big problem is if you only have one battery and you run out and this does not last that long, that's it, you gotta go home. So I would recommend buy at least two more. So you need a total of three. So that's how many I have here. One is here, one is on my second charger. I bought a second charger, which is optional, but you, you do need at least three batteries, okay? Pretty much any camera you buy, you don't wanna have just two, or you definitely don't wanna have just one. So I recommend three batteries if you could afford it. If not, at least buy one extra. And this charger is fine. The one that comes in the box is great, and it has a uh, readout as well. I just bought another dual charger so I could charge two batteries at the same time. When the third one is in here, I know I always have two ready to go. So cards, lenses, more batteries. Next is you need one of these. You need an ND filter that goes in front of your lenses. Now, you gotta get the size depending on what kind of lens you buy. I bought 82 millimeter. It's pretty standard size. For example, you can see over here, this is 82 millimeter, and this will go right in front of this lens. Now, some cameras like the one I'm shooting there have built-in ND filters. These mirrorless and these type of cameras don't have a built-in ND filter, so you have to put an ND filter in front of the lens. Now, if you don't know what an ND filter does, it basically cuts down light. So it cuts a stop or two stop or three stop. And this is these uh, variable. You basically get multiple different variable ND filters in one filter, okay? So they're really, really nice. When you shoot outside, what you could do with ND filters is you could cut the light and still shoot at a wide open aperture like F4 or F2.8 so your background goes out of focus rather than dialing up the f-stop to f22 because the sun's so bright you will use an nd filter that's a must-have then the next thing i got is uh just a pretty inexpensive cage here so the camera will go in here you have a cage and it basically lets you mount a lot of different accessories and it gives you this really nice wooden handle you see this this is really nice and it's really easy to hold so then you would hold the camera once it's in here really nice and easy. This has a flip on monitor too, which will just be flipped out over here. And this is so easy to assemble as well. And it just takes one screw here to put on the bottom of the camera and your camera would fit on it. I love this. This is, I was really surprised because it was really inexpensive. I've spent many, many hundreds of dollars on cages before. This was really, really inexpensive compared to what I've bought in the past. So I was pretty impressed with it. And the last two items I'll show you are completely optional, so you could decide if you need them or not. But this is one of my favorite tools I've bought in the last few years. I have a uh, different camera mounted on it just because I have the Sony right here, but it's pretty much the same size right here as the Sony, but with the pancake, it's gonna be much lighter. But this is really nice because you could get really, really nice shots out of this camera on this gimbal. So I'm making an unboxing video on this. Right now, I'm editing it right now. So I'll post that so you can see if this is a good fit for you. But you get some incredible shots with the low light capacity of this, with the smoothness of this Ronin RS2. It's a great, great mix. And this last piece, let me show you. I actually put the cage on. So this is typically how I would operate handheld. You would put one hand over here and one hand on this handle. And I put this cine arm my favorite arm of all time, the Noga Cine arm up here. And that's why I like the cage because it gives you lots of different mounting holes. And it also gives you a shoe mount hole over here where you could put something else, maybe a light or a lavalier mount here. So now you're ready to shoot, but I typically like to shoot with an external monitor 
that's bigger than the flip out I get over here. So I could put this on the shoe mount that's provided over here on the side, just like this, okay? It looks something like this, it's pretty dirty. So there you go. So this is a full HDMI. It has SDI as well. This is a small HD brand, I'll link it below. But it will go from HDMI, full HDMI, to the side of this camera, which also has a full HDMI plug right over here, okay? So this is really, really useful with just one cable. So I have to get that cable separate, which I have right there on the wall. And I really wish this had an easy adapter for changing the type of battery it takes, but I have a lot of NP batteries. They're called NP, they're also made by Sony. This also takes the Canon batteries as well, the LP. So you get NP, which is made by Sony, and LP if you put it the other way, which are stuff that are made by Canon, but it's not the ones that power this because this is older and there's no monitor yet that takes these type of batteries. So you do have to have two sets of chargers, one for this and one for your camera. But this is my favorite way. It's actually still pretty light. That's why I really like this monitor. It takes really low profile batteries, okay? And then you're ready to go just like this and you can operate it. You could also remove the arm if you go with the shoe mount, but you could just take this piece off. So I have this piece on the bottom that's letting me go through here. It doesn't come with the monitor, but I would take this off right now. I guess I need a wrench to get it off, but then I will put it right on top of this and then I could, um, you know, be more flexible. I could really put this anywhere I want. And the reason why I mentioned the Noga arm, they're more expensive, but the cheap arms do not hold very well. Okay, so this I've had for 10 years and I have three different sizes. But before that, I bought every cheap arm that they ever made and none of them would hold, especially when you get to heavier stuff like this with batteries and cables and everything, okay? So Noga arm is the only arm you should ever buy for this kind of application or just buy these type of mounts where you could go into the, to the hot shoe here or the cold shoe. So I hope you found this video useful, all these accessories useful. Again, don't forget, you don't have to buy everything at once. Go in the steps to make this workable for you on your next project and then continue to add to your rig. All these cameras and lenses and everything I have, I bought over a course of 13 different years, okay? I didn't buy them all at once. This stuff I bought all at once because now I'm at a position where I could do that, but typically when I was first starting out, and if you're first starting out, don't just spend all your money on gear, spend your money in trying to build out a better portfolio, better website, and trying to get more marketing and getting more clients, okay? So that's what you wanna really focus on rather than just gear. But I wanted to make this really easy for you to find the essential, essential accessories for your Sony a7S III. If you already have one, or if you're thinking about getting one, you'll understand the true cost. Thanks so much for watching this video. Make sure you subscribe. I post easy to follow weekly videos, sometimes on gear and sometimes on filmmaking, and a lot of times on the business side of filmmaking to help you make more money in the world of filmmaking and cinematography. So if you subscribe, you won't miss the next video. Thanks again for 